There's a recent story about the two and a half million tons of lithium sitting in the Salt Lake in Utah. That's enough lithium to power millions of EVs. However, there's a bit of misinformation around this story. Now, initially, this lake was in fact mined for its lithium. In fact, the US used to be the largest lithium producer in the world until it became uncompetitive on cost and they stopped mining Salt Lake for its lithium. However, this new technology allows the lake to be competitively cost efficiently mined and it also allows it to be mined while fixing the lake at the same time at a cost which actually is cheaper. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Now, we know the US is no longer the largest producer of lithium in the world, not even by a long shot. But that could change. Why massive investment into lithium deposits is going on right now? Chances are the Great Salt Lake is part of your daily life, even if you don't live in Utah. If you pop open a can of soda in the United States, it's more likely than not contains magnesium harvested from the Great Salt Lake, which gives the container its strength. The fruit, vegetables, and almonds you buy at the grocery store were likely grown with potash fertilizer produced from material in the lake's salty water as well. And with the lake's two largest mineral companies ramping up to harvest one of the world's hottest commodities, lithium, Bits of the Great Salt Lake soon could be found in your phone, laptop, or your car battery. The other great thing about this, right, is that the revenue the state collects from minerals like lithium is being used to shore up the imperiled lake's health. We know from the science that there are enormous amounts of lithium in the lake, said Republican Timothy Hawkes, and it's been mined in the past, but it wasn't commercially viable. That's now all changed. For decades, the United States was the largest producer of lithium, with the bulk of it coming out of a hard rock mine in North Carolina. Then, a small fertilizer company called SQM in Chile's Sala de Atacama Salt Flat borrowed a form of lithium extraction first pioneered in Nevada. The method mines materials from salt brine. That mineral-rich water is held in shallow ponds, which evaporate and concentrate its resources. In order for them to be economic and achieve the lowest production costs, you have to be blessed with a nice, hot, dry environment, Jaskula said of brine mineral harvesting. And the cellar de Atacama is the driest place on earth. Evaporative extraction of lithium proved more cost effective than hacking it out of a mountain since the sun does most of the work. By the 1990s, SQM was able to sell its lithium at half the price of traditional mines in the United States. As a result, hard rock wasn't able to compete in the United States, so they all went out of business. Today, China consumes the most mined lithium in the world by a long, long way. It has contracts for up to 95% of the lithium mined in Australia, making Australia the largest producer of lithium, followed by Chile. Even the most unimpressive lithium operation. If there's even a chance it will become economical, China will make a deal, Jaskula said. They're the number one battery maker now, and their mega factories are going to be increasing at a logarithmic growth rate. Right now, the US lags behind in lithium production. Electric vehicles are steering China's insatiable appetite for lithium. They're also a key component in President Joe Biden's efforts to modernize infrastructure and combat climate change in the US. But the US lags in domestic production of lithium. A number of companies and organizations throughout the nation are experimenting with innovative ways to economically extract lithium, including a geothermal project at California's Salton Sea. Getting back to the Salt Lake in Utah, one of the lake's largest mineral harvesters, Compass Minerals in Ogden, got its start in the late 1960s as Lithium Corporation of America. The company quickly realized fertilizer was a more profitable venture at the time. It's now the largest producer of sulfate of potash in the Western Hemisphere, a nutrient used to grow a variety of produce, including grapes, potatoes, and nuts. 
but Compass is going back to its roots and it's investing in lithium once again. Now pivoting to focus on the new gold rush, lithium. The minerals company now has deals to supply lithium to EV leaders such as Ford and LG Energy, who have a partnership with General Motors. And they're doubling down by using a new extraction technology to obtain the mineral with minimal impact on the environment. As the largest salt producer in North America and the UK, Compass Minerals plays a vital role in a number of industries. However, it sees the demand for lithium in the US and all over the world growing at a rate of 700% over the next five years. The company has been in business for over 175 years and it generates 1.2 billion in annual revenue. Yet Compass aims to reduce its dependency on weather-dependent minerals to focus on markets with massive growth potential, the EV industry. Now, since the Inflation Reduction Act was passed on the 16th of August, 2022, EVs are gonna see enormous growth demand in the US. For an electric vehicle to qualify for the incentives though, 40% of the battery minerals must be sourced from the US or its free trade partners, which will rise to 80% after 2026. The clause opens a huge opportunity for mineral suppliers like Compass Minerals to step up and fill the gap in the mineral supply chain in the United States. Battery grade lithium in North America is projected to grow by 700% in the next three years and to over 1,000% by 2030. So Compass Minerals is developing its lithium project in Ogden, Utah with 177,000 leased acres. And they've just announced a major milestone in the project's development. The company says it will use energy source minerals lithium extraction DLE technology to remove the mineral with minimal environmental impact. Compass will use the extractive mineral to fulfill supply agreements with EV leaders, Ford and LG Energy, and of course, therefore, General Motors as well. Now, after three years of extensive testing, Compass Minerals went with Energy Minerals DTC technology due to its superior absorption and minimal environmental impact. Chris Yandel, head of lithium at Compass Minerals, said this, Our selection of ESM is a result of a comprehensive, competitive process, and we're excited to forge ahead on our lithium development with the team as a trusted provider. Our multi-year assessment was focused on matching the right technology with our specific lithium brine resource. And we are confident we've done just that with this provider selection. Compass Minerals says the project has around 2.4 million metric tons of lithium carbonate equivalent, LCE and is fully funded for the next two years. The company reiterates it remains on track to become a low cost battery grade lithium producer by 2025. That's only two years away. Most importantly, because Compass Minerals uses a solar evaporation process, it's projected to produce significantly fewer greenhouse gas emissions. This project is enormously important. It's enormously important for the American economy. It's enormously important for electric vehicle growth in the US. And the great thing about it is that because it's very environmentally friendly and also because Salt Lake are using profits from this leasing to this company to invest into developing the lake, protecting it and saving it for the future, that it ends up actually being a win for everyone. Personally, I'm really excited to see this massive lithium extraction going on in the United States. It makes complete sense. And it's going to be exciting to see when America once again becomes one of the world's great lithium extraction powers. You never know. Maybe they could get that title back again as the world's largest lithium extractor. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.